A significant issue seems to be affecting many modern PCs, leading to complaints about low performance, stuttering, lagging during regular desktop use, and even audio dropouts. If you've been grappling with such problems and can't quite identify the root cause, this video might just have the solution you need. Let's get into it. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I felt compelled to create this video to highlight a problem that has been troubling me and many others for some time now. The aim is to shed more light onto this issue and hopefully provide you with a solution that could rectify it for you. So what exactly is this problem? It appears that many users with modern Intel desktop processors, specifically those using their hybridized architecture, such as the 12th gen Alder Lake, 13th and 14th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, are experiencing significant latency issues. These issues can manifest in various ways, from stuttering, a lagging mouse cursor, to an unresponsive file explorer, audio popping, dropouts, and more. Now, for over a year, the test bench that I use to benchmark various games for you guys in different scenarios is using an Intel Raptor. Raptor Lake CPU. For most of last year, I had been using an i7-13700K and eventually upgraded it to a 13900K. When doing my testing on the system, I never really noticed any strange issues where my mouse cursor would be lagging a lot or I was having issues with the file explorer. Though I also never used that system extensively because it wasn't my primary machine. For the most part, I would run some benchmarks, record my results, and that was it. I had another personal daily rig I was using which would handle my day-to-day -day tasks, video editing and rendering, along with where I'd play some of my games. My personal array had a Ryzen 9 5900X with 2 and BDI memory running at 3733 mega transfers and an RTX 3090. This setup served me well and I really didn't have any problems with it for the most part. A little over two months ago I decided to upgrade my personal rig with an i9 14900K and Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Apex Encore motherboard with 48GB of DDR5 memory which I've overclocked to 8000 mega transfers with tuned timings and I also updated the storage with a faster Gen 4 NVMe which was a 2TB Crucial T500. So overall it was a pretty decent jump. I got a much faster CPU, faster memory, and more storage with faster speeds as well. I still decided to keep my 3090 as for my 1440p gaming needs it's still sufficient. Since upgrading, the system has been largely problem free with one notable exception, occasional mouse cursor lag or freezing. This issue wasn't as frequent as some users have reported but it did occur occur rarely. More frequently, I did notice audio popping and occasional dropouts. My 14900K isn't overclocked. In fact, I have it undervolted because its out-of-the-box speeds was more than sufficient for my needs. I validated its stability and my RAMs overclock through extensive tr stress testing, sometimes running them overnight. I haven't observed any significant issues or severe stuttering with gaming performance. It's been quite smooth. As these issues weren't severely impacting my workflow and I was preoccupied with other matters, I decided I decided to set them aside. I plan to conduct more thorough troubleshooting when I had more time on my hands. I'd say about a month had passed since then, and I was contacted by another YouTuber, Erock on Tech. They produce excellent content on PC hardware and gaming, and I highly recommend checking out their channel if you enjoy content like mine's. They shared with me their experience of severe mouse movement lag on their system, which uses an i7-14700K. They also pointed out that a similar issue was discussed by Brian at Tech Yes City. I recall watching Brian's video when it was released, and I'll include a link to it in my video description. It's definitely worth a watch, as Brian demonstrates various issues he encountered on his system equipped with an i9-13900K. At that time, I didn't delve too deeply into it, as my test bench was the only system I had with a 13900K, and I was primarily using it for just game testing, not for video editing or creating projects. But since Erock had recently reached out, and now I was using a 14900K system as my daily driver, this did prompt me to look into it again, and I tried to replicate some of the stuff that Brian showed in his video, but I didn't encounter the issues he was having. My system has been quite snappy and responsive overall. This isn't to say that the problem doesn't exist, it definitely does, it's just that it seems like the degree to which it's impacting users varies from system to system. There were several people in that video's comment section who had mentioned they did also experience the same issues. Another tech you 
YouTuber by the name of Taekwondo made a video talking about how he had experienced the same or similar issues to what Brian showed in his video. By the way, I'll have all of these videos linked in the description and urge you all to check them out so you can get more insight on the matter. Unfortunately, Taekwondo's original video was privatized because trolls and morons on the internet started to give him crap, which I just find to be really dumb. The fact that somebody can't share their issues online to shed some light on a problem, that clearly is affecting others without some fanboys having to come to the defense of a soulless corporation is not just disturbing, it's also just downright pathetic. In any case, while I was doing some testing on my system, I did download a program called LatencyMon to check my system's latency. What LatencyMon does is that it checks if a system running Windows is suitable per for processing real-time audio and other tasks. LatencyMon analyzes the possible causes of a buffer underruns by measuring kernel timer latencies and reporting DPC and ISR execution times as well as hard page faults. It will provide a comprehensible report and find the kernel modules, drivers, and processes responsible for causing audio latencies, which result in dropouts. DPC refers to deferred procedure call, the time it takes an operating system to complete certain driver tasks. ISR is a software routine that hardware invokes in response to an interrupt. Ideally, you want to minimize the DPC and ISR to ensure you don't get any lag, stuttering, or audio dropouts. After I had ran it on my 4900K system, within seconds the test failed and it showed ridiculously high spikes and they were frequent. Although interestingly, even though latency mon was showing high spikes and they were frequent, my system didn't feel like it was stuttering or lagging as it would imply. In real world use cases, it was totally fine. Like I said, occasionally I would get some audio pops and dropouts and rarely would I see my cursor stutter. Now if you go online and do search of high DPC and ISR, you'll find countless threads on various forums of users discussing this issue from many years ago. Now this isn't just something new that started recently. And it doesn't just affect Intel systems, but it also seems to affect Ryzen systems as well. I do recall having this problem on my 1800X and 3900X system, which eventually got fixed with a BIOS update. Epos Vox, another content creator who I'm sure most of you have seen, said he had been battling these issues on both of his Ryzen Threadripper systems to the point he just said screw it and switched to a Mac. Erock had also told me he tested latency mod on his 14700K system and was finding the same problems pertaining to DPC and high I are. Speaking of fixes, there are various tweaks and fixes out there that people have shared that eliminated their high DPC and ISR. However, everyone's system is different. I found that some of the fixes that worked for some people didn't work out for others because their latency issues were caused by something else. There could be various reasons for this, and like I said, the report that LatencyMon produces is pretty helpful in narrowing down exactly what is causing it. Some people pointed towards NVIDIA's drivers, some said it was their network driver causing the issue, some said it was audio drivers, it's different. Throughout my troubleshooting, I tried to pinpoint what it was, and at first, latency mon was pointing towards NVIDIA's drivers and my ASUS audio drivers. I ended up completely DDoing my NVIDIA drivers and got rid of my audio drivers completely, and then I ran the test again, but I found that the issue with latency mon still persisted. Now, I could go on for days talking about all the sorts of tweaks I tried, or what others online were proposing that fixed it for them, but we just don't have that kind of time, so I'll skip to the solution that fixed it for me. The first thing I did was switch to Windows Ultimate Performance Plan, which isn't accessible by default, but by using this line in the command prompt, it will allow you to select it. This helped a bit in reducing the latency spikes, but they were still frequent, and after a couple of minutes, I'd see the message again stating my system just wasn't suitable for handling real-time audio tasks. The next thing I did was ensuring that Windows wasn't parking any of my cores. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can disable it in the registry, but I found that this tweak would, wouldn't really remain applied. I then downloaded a program called Unpark CPU. It's a simple, straightforward program that will allow you to keep your cores unparked. All you have to do is click Unpark All Cores, hit Apply, and that will ensure all of your cores are unparked. After using Unpark CPU, it immediately made a dramatic difference. I was no longer seeing any ridiculously high DPC or ISR spikes. This tells me that there was an issue with the way Windows was parking cores and how the scheduler was working. It just seemed like Core 0 was getting hammered while other cores were not running active when they should have been. Core parking was introduced in Windows back in 2008 and it was helpful in lowering power consumption and prioritizing efficiency. However, these days there are also many built-in technologies to reduce power such as Core Boost, Speed Shift from Intel, AMD has Cool and Quiet, there are individual Core or C states that aim to 
to improve efficiency. And while it's great that there are many features to help reduce power, I feel like with so many of them active now, they could be working against each other and it's just causing an adverse effect. By unparking CPU cores, you're essentially keeping them active and ready to handle tasks immediately without the latency associated with waking them up from a parked state. This can lead to smoother real-time performance, reducing DPC and ISR spikes. Do keep in mind that by doing these tweaks, you will also see higher idle power consumption by pro probably around 20 to 30 watts. That's what I noticed on my systems. Because your cores aren't becoming inactive or parking themselves to go to a lower powered state. Now, another tweak that some people suggested, and this is something you're going to want to do at your own risk, and that is to disable Spectre and Meltdown mitigations. But there's been numerous users who have reported that it does definitely help with DPC and ISR latency, along with actually boosting FPS. Though your mileage is probably going to vary on that, it seems to impact different systems in a different extent. After doing all these tweaks and finally getting rid of the DPC and ISR latency spikes, I didn't really notice or feel any drastic changes with my system because, as I said earlier in the video, my system was already running very snappy in my day-to-day -day use. However, what I did notice is that any random audio popping I would get has completely disappeared. But I didn't want to leave it at just that. And you guys know me, I love benchmarking games after applying various tweaks into tunes to my system to see if doing so will give you any tangible performance benefits. The same applies here, and as I had mentioned, my test bench which was using a 13900K was also exhibiting the same behavior. Now I'll drop the test bench specs in the video description to save us some time. Our CPU has its P cores running at 5.7, E cores at 4.6, and the ring is at 5GHz. And for our GPU we're using an RTX 4090 overclocked, and my memory is also running at 7200 mega transfers with tuned timings. I also tested the game at 1080p since we're mainly focused on the CPU performance here. We're going to go through these benchmarks pretty quickly because as you can see from our first title, Alan Wake 2, performance between the two configurations is identical. And that is what was observed from the majority of the titles tested, which is also why I'm just sharing 9 graphs here. Remnant 2 shows us a 5 FPS boost to our average FPS, but 1% low stay the same. Last of Us Part 1 is margin of error stuff, it's identical performance. Now with Baldur's Gate 3, which is primarily CPU bound, we see that while our average FPS improves a bit, we do get a nice 10% boost to our 1% lows. In Hogwarts Legacy, we see a similar story, a bit of a performance boost to our average FPS, but our 1% lows improved by 9%. Apart from those two titles, the rest of the titles here showed us results that were within margin of error, so we're just going to flash through the rest of them as there's nothing interesting going on, and I guess that's a good thing, because it'd suck if you were leaving performance on the table for your games just because the default Windows Core parking policy wasn't good enough. As you can see from our 9 game average, not a whole lot changes, and this is what I had expected because again, as I said, my system was running overall very snappy and smooth, and I wasn't personally encountering any hard lag, stuttering, or freezing with my system in the first place. This way you can rest assured if you aren't using a utility to unpark cores, editing values within the registry, or using the ultimate performance plan, you're not really leaving any performance on the table. At least that was the case for most of the games I tested, which I also understand is a small sample size. Two of those games were somewhat of an exception and with loads of games out there you're just going to have to test them out for yourself as well and see if disabling core parking impacts the game's performance. There could very well be more titles out there for sure that may show an impact and provide larger differences, but I suspect most of the titles out there will be showing results that are within margin of error or nothing really noticeable. In any case, I wanted to put this info out there because I was seeing posts and hearing feedback from various users about their experience and noticed just how much it varied. So hopefully this information can be of some use to anyone out there that's been experiencing high latency issues, DPC and ISR, and having stuttering with their games. I'm also urging you all, please, if you have any issues of yourself that you've run into, uh, like I've talked about in the video, share them in the comments below as it might be helpful to someone else. Alrighty guys, so that's going to do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.